We are broadcasting live from my lab at MIT. My name is Sebastian Sung. I'm a professor of computational neuroscience. And last February, we launched iWire in beta. And we we're happy and proud to announce that on Monday will be the official launch. And we've declared that Monday will be J Day. The scientific question that we're going to address, which is how does the J cell serve the function of detecting moving visual stimuli. And to help answer that question, we're going to map the connection to the J cell. And assisting me with the launch are these two lovely members of the lab. Hello. And so they're going to introduce themselves now. So. Hi, I'm Amy Robinson. Don't be shy, Amy. Okay. Hey, guys. I'm Amy Robinson. Okay. I've never seen her at a loss for words. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I'm Claire O'Connell. Um, I'm an undergrad at MIT, and I work in the lab, too. And it's been very, very nice having Amy join. She's a social media absolute expert. So hopefully bringing in all people to join. And speaking of social media, yeah. we want you guys to send us in questions. So tweet us at iWire. It's, it's E-Y-E underscore wire. Or also post on our Facebook page or post on the iWire Google. Um, if you do that right now, and also I think we we know uh, there's some people who are joining us live also, some people from the iWire community, so could you guys just briefly introduce yourselves? And we know all of you, but maybe not everybody watching knows everybody else. Sure. Larry, go ahead. Oh, me first? Okay. Uh, my name is Lori. I'm a student at the College of Westchester, and I got into iWire while I was doing research for a paper about what is the good life. Um, and I ended up seeing the TED Talk about the connectome, and I just got sucked in. Like, <laughs> all of the classes I was taking uh, for, for medical assisting just, like, kind of came together for me at that moment, because... I was learning about oral communication and how to give a speech and Sebastian's talk um, like seriously was like oh, the perfect example of all the techniques they were trying to teach me so that on top of my interest in what he was talking about and like a lot of the stuff he said was in the paper that I had already written so I got really excited and uh, wrote him a letter and he got back to me and got me on the beta and I've been here ever since. That's right. The good life is neuroscience, doing neuroscience research, right? Um, I didn't realize it at the time, but yes. <laughs> I was reading a lot of, um, there was a Harvard study that followed a bunch of students uh, throughout their life um, and like how good their quality of life was and everything. I was like, wait, these guys are neurologists, really? So yeah, it ended up being a neurology paper. <clears throat> well, we're, we're happy to have Laurie here because she's really been one of the founding members of the community. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, and uh, Jose? Great, thank you. Uh, my name is Jose Ero. I live in, in Spain, in Coruña. I'm from Venezuela. And uh, I, I actually, I come from a non-scientific background. Uh, I've studied journalism and acting and movie directing and, and everything that has to do with uh, human performance in, in, in the arts. And that, particularly the combination of, of acting and, and modern acting and uh, movie directing and the decisions directors and editors make when editing movies uh, actually pushed me into neuroscience. It made me get an interest, an interest in it. So I did a master's in cognitive science here in, in Barcelona. And at the same time, I was following a Twitter account uh, about neuroscience. And it tweeted something about, well, you can be part of the neuroscience quest to trace neurons. And I said, well, how can I do that? Because since I come from a non-scientific background, I haven't had really the chance to be part of any, any kind of investigation. So, uh, well, I did. I signed up for the, for the beta phase. I got invited in, in March, and then, well, things sort of evolved from there. So I even met Sebastian last uh, July in Madrid when, when he came to Spain 
to present the IY project and, and his book, Connect Home, mm -hmm. and sort of helped uh, a, a bit there. And I'm just thrilled to be, to be part of this. And, and sort of uh, what, one of the things I love the most is explaining this project and, and how relevant it could be to every human being on Earth mostly probably to those that have not uh, been born yet but and and make the connection to the real to the real uh, human and intangible life so i'm i'm really happy to be here and be part of of this community just to fill everybody in jose actually is the pioneer of internationalization of iwire because he's translated some of our materials into spanish uh, we haven't fully finished the Spanish version of iWire, but we want to have versions in every language, ultimately. We're working on German right now, as well. So if anybody right. would like to help out with any language, it's very appreciated. Okay, John? I'm uh, John Bishvik. I'm a fellow entrepreneur, and uh, I'm a managing consultant with IBM. And um, I'm a friend with Amy. She knows I'm a bit of a geek, just generally. Uh, I'm not in the science community, but I'm um, definitely curious about lots of curious things. So she sent me a link to iWire. I logged in and checked it out, and uh, congratulations on the design. I think the design's extremely intuitive, uh, unlike some other products like <coughs> Hangout. <coughs> um, and um, just thought I'd, uh, I wanted to come and, and meet, meet you guys face to face, and uh, uh, see, get to learn a little more about the project and what your find out what your plans are for it. Great. Oh, and we see uh, Jean Francois. Yep. Okay. So my name is Jean Francois. For those who have difficulties, you can call me JF. Uh, I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Duke. I make research on social cognition, and I work with monkeys. And uh, we and we have to say that uh, uh, Jean Francois has been a a another pioneering iWire member, and he's recently written. He's a blogger. Why don't you say a little bit about that? Oh well, we just opened this new blog at uh, brainfacts.org with the SFN. So I thought I could put in a little bit of effort to help the cause because I've been impressed by the potential of what you've created. And I thought that the more people we can get, the more impressive it will be. So I'm all about uh, finding ways to get uh, thousands and millions of people doing this. Right on. So, yeah, we created iWire because we were convinced that uh, anyone, anywhere, should be able to participate in neuroscience research. And really, uh, I think technology has made it possible for the unthinkable, right? That people could really participate in cutting edge neuroscience research in, the, in a very exciting part of neuroscience, connectomics. So the methods that we're using are certainly novel, uh, but also this, this hangout is about the science uh, because we want to talk to people about the kinds of questions we're trying to answer and why they're important. So I thought that we would start with questions um, about the science, about why study the retina? Why do we study J cells? What are these J cells? And then we might expand to uh, questions about the methods that we're using, this novel online community itself. So, so let's, let's kick it off. We'll take questions from those people who are participating live and those who, are, who can send us um, questions by posting on the Hangout, on, on, G on Google+, and also on Twitter. Anyone want to start? Oh, Michelle. Yeah. Michelle, are you there? Can you talk? Oh. I think Michelle, I didn't ask her to introduce herself but uh, because she doesn't have a mic, I think, but she could um, type an introduction into Google, into the Google Plus. All right, so let's go ahead oh. with questions. Does anyone have questions? Yeah, I got, I got one that, that I think would be really interesting, maybe for the general audience, and it is, when you think about neurons and when you talk about neurons to anyone, the thought or the image that comes into your head, it's a brain. And not an eye. So why? Why people might be surprised why uh, a cutting edge investigation on neuroscience is working specifically with the eye? That's a great question, Jose. So there's two reasons. One is that 
visual perception, the problem of how we actually see the world and understand it, is a classic and important question in neuroscience. And the eye and the retina is actually the first step in that process, right? All information about the visual world has to enter our brain through the retina. Now, the second point is that the retina is inside your eye, but it actually contains neurons, and I'm not sure how many people realize that. It doesn't just contain the cells that sense the light, but it also contains other kinds of cells which just process information and ultimately send information to the brain. So it's not just a sensor like a camera, but it's a smart camera that does some kind of visual processing. Now the third issue is that the brain is big. Big and complicated. And often in science we have to choose what's, what's possible. So we need to start out with an approachable part of the nervous system, and that's the retina. Some people say, and this is a long tradition also in neuroscience, let's not study brains that are huge and complicated like our own. Let's study flies. Let's study worms because they have, they're compact, right? They're, they have smaller numbers of neurons, and they're really stereotyped. So like in the famous worm C. elegans, you can find the same neurons in, 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 this, in every worm, every individual worm, you'll find exactly the same neurons with the same shapes and locations, and they all have names. So you know, not, not Tom, Dick, and Harry, but they have names, four-letter acronyms. So it makes it a lot easier to study those small nervous systems. But the approach of the retina is, well, I like to think that inside of us, we all have an inner worm or fly, and that's right here. That's in our eyes. The retina is compact because it's so thin. Um, it's highly stereotyped. So you won't find exactly the same neurons in your retina and my retina, you know, one for one correspondence, but you'll find exactly the same types of neurons. And that makes it easier to study retinas because they're similar to each other. And there's a lot of that similarity, that stereotypy, is controlled by the genes. So genetically hardwired, roughly. I mean, there's some effective experience, but the retina is genetically highly controlled in its structure. So it's a simpler system to approach. Does that answer your question? It's a long answer. but uh, uh, A good one. Thanks. And, and um, the retina is really exciting because I think that, um, well, you know, neuroscience is going through a revolution. People don't you know, outsiders to neuroscience may not realize what that revolution is, but in the re it's, it's a revolution being driven by new technologies for studying the nervous system. And those technologies are um, a real proving ground for those technologies is the retina. So if we can't understand the retina, I doubt we'll succeed with understanding the rest of the brain. By the same token, if we understand the retina, that's a huge step towards um, the whole intellectual approach and uh, uh, that will go far, I think, in understanding the rest of the brain. And just to add on, there's the intellectual approach um, that it will definitely be helpful in understanding other brain regions when we figure out how the retina is wired. But there are also applications that can follow immediately from knowing the wiring of the retina. So if you're thinking machine vision, any, a lot of technologies, people with retinal degeneration who can see throughout their lives and then their eyesight starts to break down. Once we know how the retina is wired, potentially people can look into how to change that um, if they're starting to get breakdown. So there are a lot of applications. So for people who aren't just interested in the specifics of neuroscience, it, it's not applicable as well. So Claire, that's a good point. So iWire is fundamentally right now a basic science project. We're just trying to answer basic questions about how the nervous system functions. But down the line, some of the discoveries we make could be useful in medical applications, right? So blindness is a severe disability. And we know uh, recently a company contacted us. They are interested in making therapies for blindness based on optogenetics. And they said that they really have a need to know more about how the retina is wired up and uh, you know what functions neurons have in the retina and so on. So more basic science in general is needed in the nervous system to make these practical applications move forward. Good question, Jose. Yeah. <laughs>
Anybody? Thank you. I, ha I have a follow-up, actually. Okay. Oh, there we go. My, my, the smart camera in my eye is asking a question. Uh, why is Puka there? <laughs> why is Puka back there? I mean, I cannot <laughs> stop watching her. <laughs> when did she become part of the team? We actually just added her. Yeah, so Puka... There we go. Yeah, Puka is a... Is a... <laughs> A Korean Another one of Sebastian's lovely ladies. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a Korean animation character, and uh, it's, yeah, I don't know. I think one of my students gave me this a while ago, so it's just hanging there. Amy oh, wait, so it's from you, Sebastian? It was from me. Fine. <laughs> Great. Now, now I, I'm happy I asked now. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. We made it the lab mascot, but then my <laughs> my administrative assistant actually thought it was bad. <laughs> oh, that makes more sense. <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> and this is an honest look into it in the MIT neuroscience lab. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Too much We're a little weird. All right. Uh, anyway. Back to the science. <laughs> we, we do have a question from one of our online viewers, oh, Julianne yeah. McCall, and she's from Heidelberg. We have a bunch of viewers actually around the world. I know we've got Mark Burhop down in Alabama, which is where I'm from, uh, and we've got Marconi in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and Julianne's in uh, Heidelberg, Germany. Oh, Julianne, if you're out there, why don't you just um, type in a few words about yourself and introduce yourself to the community? When we're talking Can about translation, us? it looks like Julianne said she could help out with can you hear us, Julian? Julie, if you can hear us, type something into Google Plus or tweet us or something. So let's. Um, so her question, you can do that while. Okay, so Julianne asked. Uh, Amy, why don't you read Julianne's question? So Julianne asks, I'd like to know how you will be confirming the quality of the work submitted in iWire. Question. Great question. So iWire is a serious game or a game with a purpose. And our purpose in the end is, you know, we want to have fun. But our purpose in the end is to produce science. And to do that, we have to have accurate results from our community. And so this is a, a major um, research topic over the last six, seven months of iWire development, right? We, we, we were in beta, and you, you've been seeing, as you play iWire, you've been seeing that the, the GUI, the, the user interface, is becoming more and more beautiful due to the efforts of our developers. What you haven't seen is that behind the scenes, under the hood, they have been making all kinds of changes in order to um, make iWire produce accurate results, scientific things that are true. And so it's a, it's a challenge. And the, the first thing that we started out with was simple. It's the idea of voting. So every cube is done by multiple iWire users, sometimes five, sometimes 10, sometimes more. And we take a vote of their results. They have to agree on something in order to, for us to count it as true. Now, democracy usually works. But as we all know, sometimes democracy gives the wrong answer. And so there are some difficult locations in these neurons. Because these images are so difficult, are, are, are very noisy, it's sometimes difficult to interpret them. And sometimes democratic vote doesn't give the right answer. You have to be um, a real expert in order to figure out the continuation of a branch of a neuron. And our iWire community is composed of a real mixture, right? There's some people who have been doing it a long time who are experts. And there's some people who are just starting out. They've just done the tutorial. So we have to figure out ways of solving that. And we're trying to move to a system that has both democratic voting, but also um, leverages the opinions of experts in order to uh, make decisions about really difficult locations. So it's a combination of democracy and elitism. We need to have both. Uh, and I think that's sort of the way science works in general, right? In science, the idea is that anybody should be heard, but in the end, um, it's not necessarily uh, a democratic vote that counts. Um, uh, sometimes, the, in, you know, okay, in the end, in some sense, democracy matters. But in the beginning, it may be the view of a minority that, in the end, prevails across the entire community. So that's that's what we have to allow for. And are you uh, are you handling that by 
figuring out which cubes have um, uh, arguable results from the user community. Conflicting results, I guess. Are you, are you tracking? Are you tracking like a cube A had user one, two, and three do it, and they all came out with slightly different results? So cube cube A then goes to user five, that is uh, really good at it, has a lot of uh, expert um, insight into the tool for him to be a tiebreaker kind of thing, or her. Just saying. Uh, so it's not that sophisticated yet. So we need to move to that that kind of uh, system. Um, but right now, I mean, so the basic problem is sometimes there is a consensus and it's still wrong. Right. That's kind of the hardest problem to resolve. Right. Fair enough. And, but what you're, what you're mentioning is also important that if there's a, a lot of disagreements, then we might recruit some people to, uh, um, to adjudicate. Um, and the other thing that's missing right now is, is discussion, right? Because when we have disagreements in science, we argue with each other and sometimes... No. Sometimes uh, I find that nine, you know, sometimes non-scientists are surprised to find that scientists have such, you know, bitter sounding arguments. Uh, but actually, usually in the best case, we don't take it personally because we're just after the truth, right? So sometimes we do get offended and people, you know, don't get along. But ideally, we, we, can, we can argue uh, hard and uh, and then we can still not take it personally because we're after something greater than ourselves. So discussion, we, we, that's still a feature that we haven't um, really fully added yet. Um, but discussion, you know, being able to, for the community to, be able to discuss the right answer for a given cube is, a, is an important thing. So yeah, it's probably even more important than what I was suggesting. Yeah, it, it, and it's also more fun. It's social. It's social. It's, uh, and the social side of science is really important. Oh, so Julianne um, just, Julianne just, just typed back, and she's... Oh, she's a PhD student at Heidelberg University in CNS Regeneration, and she's organizing the International Brain Bean Neuroscience Competition. Right. Mm -hmm. We're working with her on one of our educational outreach Oh, that's really programs. cool. And, Ju and Julianne, I hope you're aware that the, our collaborators on iWire, um, they actually worked at the Max Planck Institute for Medical Research in Heidelberg, and the data set that's inside iWire was, was acquired with this special form of electron microscopy that was developed at that institute. And so I've spent a lot of time in Heidelberg. I've walked through the castle, and I drank lots of good German beer. <laughs> <laughs> the first benefits of being a neuroscientist. OK. Living the life, baby, living the life. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever they let us out of the lab. <laughs> Wait a minute. No Aren't they? You? What's that? Aren't they you? Uh, <laughs> no, no. When I go there, when I when I go there, we have a we have a tough taskmaster, my collaborator, with the course all night long. Ah, uh, right. Okay. So the taskmaster I'm familiar with comes from Amy, and that's you. You <laughs> <laughs> <is> the king. <laughs> you have. Oh, uh, Julian just. Heard. Oh, Julianne. So, Julianne, you know the many qualities of the place. Yes. Yes. Okay, so let's see. So, anyone else want to ask a question? Mark has, Mark has an interesting kind of side question. So, Mark Burhop uh, in Huntsville, Alabama, asks, he says that the science is interesting, but he wants to hear more about the ideas of crowdsourcing and gamification to support science work. Cool. Okay, I, I I don't know that that's an interesting topic, but I think I need a more specific question to know what you really wanna, what you're really driving at here. You're in neuroscience. Cheers to that. And he also says it seems, yeah, right. Keeping the game entertaining will be key to, to getting people without a special interest in the field. Have you put any thoughts in, into how to bring more people into the lab? Julianne, I can cheers you in Europe, but not yeah, here. Yeah, but you, you should talk about the board of advisors. <laughs> oh, okay. So Mark Burhop, actually, um, Mark, please uh, introduce yourself by uh, making some comments online, um, and I'll try to answer your question while you just say a little bit about yourself the way that Julianne did. All right, so Mark is asking about the challenge of getting more people playing iWire. Right, so right now we have 
almost 9,000 registered users, and maybe, maybe 50 people are active at any given day. And if we were to boost that, right, if we were to boost that by 10 times, really we'd be going 10 times faster, right? So, <laughs> and, and it's amazing how math works. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love it. <laughs> it. It took an extensive education uh, in, in theoretical <laughs> physics for me to make that calculation. So, I saw you bust out the little calculator you're accidentally screen sharing. You know, you pulled up the scientific calculator, you did that number. It's actually an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, why don't you know, how can we go about getting um, more people to join up? And, and so, Mark asked, for example, about the gamification. Can we improve the gamification? So I, the first thing I'd like to say is that until now, we haven't put a lot of effort into recruiting more people to iWire because we weren't sure that we had solved the accuracy problem. Mm -hmm. Now that we believe we've solved it, you know, we're going to have better solutions as time goes on, but we have at least one solution that works. Now is the time to recruit more people, because their efforts really will, uh, you know, they really will be useful for generating more science. Um, the efforts were useful before, um, but uh, you know, it's just much more amplified now that we've we, we've um, feel we solved the accuracy problem. Okay, so what's the challenge? Um, I think I think part of it is gamification, but I'd li actually like to ask, uh, you know. We actually don't know a lot about why current iWire members are so dedicated to the experience. You know, what, what do you, so I'd like to turn the question around. What do you think is the most, what, what would have the most impact for us to do to get more people doing iWire? Because I do believe this is the most exciting adventure of our time, um, mapping the brain. And I think every, I think the whole world should be doing it, as Jose says. So how do we do this? Thing? Anyone out there want to uh, say why personally they do it? Do you love the game, or is it the science? Jose, are you trying to talk? Yeah. We can't hear you. Jose, I have my mic muted. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I, I, I think I began because of an interest in, in an interest in the science. I think, uh, but why do I go on? And I think there are, I, I can distinguish two stages maybe. At, at the beginning, it was I think the the novelty of it, but it, I think it wore off with with time. I mean, the novelty itself, not the meaning of it, but I, uh, it could sort of get erased at times, for me personally, I'm trying to, to look at myself. And then what I think has kept me going, even though I'm not doing it as much as I used to, I have to, to be honest about that. And well, they know. Yeah, yeah they know, uh, and, and I think Sebastian knows about somebody that might be happy about that. But <laughs> um, I think later it became about the community also. I mean, being able not only to, to maintain that meaning in terms of science and contribution and, and, and all that, but also to put faces to the project. So having a sort of relationship with Sebastian, knowing Amy and seeing you guys, I, I think the feeling of community is, is, is great. And I just had a crazy thought <laughs> while you were speaking. I'm, I'm just going to let it out and, and you see if you can do anything about it or if you want to think about it. <laughs> we'll never know. It's a great idea. <laughs> Model <laughs> of Saturday. Sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, we froze. There, there, there's a technical term for it. It's called internet lag. Oh, uh -huh. all right. So I was saying, I just had a crazy thought, and uh, I would think a bit maybe about the model of this. Uh, what is it? Multi-level marketing MLM, where people recruit other people. So maybe if you feel you are bringing, not, not only you tracing the neurons yourself, but you're bringing more and more people into the project, that could maybe help someone increase their feeling of contribution, besides the science, which is obviously the most important part. I was just thinking about that. What do other people think about that? Well, I expressed an opinion on the forum. Uh, do you want to go ahead? No, no, please. 
So I expressed an opinion on the forum about uh, badges, badge system. I think we have to go with what, what did people get addicted to in the last years? And it's Farmville, it's Dota 2, it's those games that are very addictive. And why are they addictive? They're addictive because they penetrate the social network through Facebook, through, through systems that allow them to display to their friends, hey, I reached level 7 at Farmville and I, I have 10 pigs and one cow. So I think that if you would do that with neurons, that would work for sure. Yeah, I think uh, I think I think he's he's I think he's right there, um, and I'm sure that that your team can come up with some pretty uh, uh, funny funny and geeky names for things, right? That I think that the uh, the badges should have. Um, one of the things that uh, um, a thought that that Jose sparked when he was speaking was that uh, I think something that would be that would be interesting in the application. And I don't know if I mean I don't know if this is the the forum that you want to use for this kind of uh, of discussion, but I think one of the things that and if not stop me, um, I think one of the things that uh, would be would be interesting is seeing what your friends did, or and perhaps how they did, so that for instance Amy and I could connect through iWire, and I can see some of the work that she's done. Right, and therefore also see things like her badges, right? As mentioned, uh, I th I also think uh, for me to to be honest, something that was missing, <clears throat> right? You you've got the um, the basics of the gamification down, right? Where you have uh, you have some ranks, you have a point system, stuff like that. Uh, something I think is m that's missing is perhaps an animation, right? So if you, as an example, um, you finish a neuron correctly and it would animate something about it um, or it would, uh, would kind of show a bigger map of that, um, so something along that lines, but, you know, a, a visual, um, a visual uh, reference to an accomplishment. Right, whether it's and it can be something. It could be an explosion. It goes woohoo, you know, something like that. I mean, it, it could be kind of anything that uh, that for for people to look forward to for completing each step, right? I like that. Yeah, we need a recording of you saying woohoo. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's totally do the sound bite. <laughs> 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 there you go. That's better. I like angry birds. <laughs> hey, Laurie, do you want to chime in? Um, you know what I think would be pretty cool. Um, if when you're actually playing and you see in the chat window, if people maybe had like a little icon or or sort of badge thing that shows like, okay, I'm willing to help the the newbies if they have questions like right here on the chat window. Um. And that way, people could, you know, be like, "Oh, this is who I should bug when they're online. They don't mind, or they they know it well enough to be able to help me." That's a really good. That's idea. good. I mean, I think so. We are we're gonna we're gonna work really hard to implement these suggestions. Uh, we've been we've been struggling because we don't have much development uh, uh, staff. I mean, we have incredible developers, but uh, <laughs> we just don't have that many. Um, and so. As a first step, we do have the social sharing buttons. We, we just finally put them on because we're ready to start trying to uh, spread iWire <laughs> on, on the site. Um, so we're hoping that users will use those. Um, and gamification, I think, I think gamification and community are two things that really go together. So you know, the chat is an important feature because it already allows people to interact some in a, in a, in a new way. And I think Laurie's suggestion is really great. Yeah, I have another one. <laughs> yeah. um, if you're in mapping and something's really weird or you're pretty sure that there's um, like mixed content where somebody mapped two different ones and you're sure they don't go together and you can't erase it because the computer already has it in there, no. if, um, if when you hit skip, skip cube, 
it would be cool if you could tell it why you were skipping the cube. So that way the, the experts who are going over it will have like that much of a head start and be a little bit more accurate as to like, okay, why are these users skipping this cube? Oh, because there's, there's merging content. Yeah. Or even, even even to be more granular, if you're working on a specific a specific neuron within that cube, if you could say, I think this piece of this of this uh, of this path is wrong. I think the AI is wrong in this case. Yeah. So we used to have um, this is really important. We used to have this uh, feature in the skip cube that you could give a reason why. And then, yeah. And then Mark took out that feature because we actually had no way of using that information. So oh. again, once we have a way of using it, um, in general, I think that anybody should be able to leave a message uh, about a cube that other people can Can't hear. Uh, making the whole thing more social. Uh, just you know, sign. You know, anytime there's a difficult location, people should be able to argue about it with each other, and, and that's a, a real priority for us. Uh, <laughs> should argue about it. You know, discuss. Discuss about it. So what you're saying is you like to argue. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's what you're saying. <laughs> did I say that? I don't think so. <laughs> yes, right? you did. <laughs> it's recorded. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> so, um, and, and there's another thing that we have to add, which is really this very thing. Uh, Remember, I talked. I said in, in, in accuracy, there's a whole notion of expertise, and as we know that as iWirers start, they're real novices. They never seen what this data looks like. They don't know what a neuron looks like, and then there's this incredible progression that happens. And in some sense, you might start to lose interest after a month because you feel like you've pretty much seen it all and you've learned what neurons look like. Um, and so, what we need to do is provide a way for for the more and more difficult cases to be. Um, funneled to the experts. I think uh, that was mentioned here. Um, if we had that, then there would be this clear progression where you're just always getting better and better. Um, and you know that we, we know that people uh, can get better, um, sort of, you know, over months and years at interpreting these images. And we just haven't set it up right now so that experts get harder things to work on. Uh, so it, it's not as obvious that you're getting better. Yeah, it's a really cool, intuitive uh, first experience. But I think you're, I think, I think, you know, in my own not so humble opinion, that uh, your biggest challenge is going to be maintaining people's interest, right? Getting them on, getting them to look at it, and go, "Hey, this is really cool. You've got that, right?" Getting them to stay on and keep using it. That's, I think, that's going to be one of your biggest challenges. Well, well there's another. Yeah, yeah. So the other the other thing is that we've actually had difficulty in doing is is getting people to talk about and think about the, the scientific questions that we're trying to answer, um, and that's that's sort of another notion of expertise. You'll start out um, interpreting these images and learning what a neuron looks like, but it's also interesting and becomes much more compelling when you know what this data is being used for. Yeah. What kinds of questions are we trying to answer? And so, um, but that's hard because in order to understand that, you've got to learn a little bit about neuroscience, the basics of neurons, and what the retina does, and so on. And so we've had difficulty in getting the community to that next stage where we collectively discuss the whole scientific content. And right. so always, like, like in, this, in this Hangout, uh, this has been great, but most of the questions um, are about how to and discussion is about how to improve the basic experience, but it's not about the science. That's because I'm oh, not okay. smart enough to talk about the science. Everybody is. I have a question. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yes? I have a question about the science. Uh, what? How do you approach uh, what you will do with this data? Are you going with the mentality like I have a plan and I know what I will do, or are we just gathering this and the ideas that you want to apply to analyze the functionality of those neural networks will come after the data acquisition? Well, the whole point of J Day is that we are focused, we're focusing the efforts of the community on the scientific question. So it's true there is a kind of larger 
goal, which is to map the entire retinal connectome, and that is data that would be important for many kinds of scientific questions. But um, it's also fun to just think about a specific one. And so that's why we're, we're saying that Monday is J-Day. And the J cell is a, kind, a particular kind of cell in the retina that's responsible for detecting moving visual stimuli. In particular, visual stimuli that move downwards on the retina. So if something moves upwards in the world, because your lens reverses things, the lens in your eye reverses things, it moves downward on the retina. And so <laughs> it's a really simple question, but what's so funny? <laughs> I was activating the JSO. Oh, you were, oh, you were activating the JSO. Right. No, they, they, they were giving you rabbit ears. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it, it's, it may sound really trivial, but nobody knows how the retina is able to um, detect moving stimuli. Well, that's an exaggeration because actually in the last, it's a 50-year-old question. In, in the last 10 years, this question has started to become answered for um, another kind of direction-selective ganglion cell. So there's many kinds of ganglion cells that are direction-selective. And some of them have been studied for 50 years. Now it turns out that the J cell was just discovered in 2008 by a team at Harvard University. And it's, it was a surprising finding that it was a new kind of direction select the ganglion cell. And nobody knows the answer to the question of how that cell detects motion. So the findings of iWire will help inform uh, the, the community, the small community that's working on that question. Okay, so we didn't have time for the full science, um, so we're, we're hard at work. We're trying to create um, enough uh, basic content about <laughs> neuroscience, about the retina, and about J-cells. Um, we're trying to make blogs, little videos that are educational. And I think once the iWire community sees that, the, that stuff, then they'll be qualified, in some sense, to have discussions about where it is that they're trying to go. So, you know, we'll, we'll try to make it as fun as possible, and I think it's great because uh, the community will be exposed to what's really happening on the frontiers of science, not just the stuff you read about in, I don't know, newspapers. <laughs> pop neuroscience. Is that? Yeah, pop neuroscience. Yeah. All that fluff, you know? That's right. Yeah, there <laughs> is a lot of fluff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one, one question I, I've got, right? So, um, I'm interested in, you know, being a, a business guy. I mean, I'm interested in uh, a couple of statistics that, I'm, I'm, that you may or may not be tracking, and if not, that's fair. Uh, you may want to consider them. So you've had, you've gotten about 9,000 users, right? And they've been on for about nine months ish, right? Um, do you know how many cubes they've done? What length of a neuron they've done? Um, uh, you know, where where that neuron would be placed in the human head kind of thing? Yeah, so actually we looked, just yesterday, we looked up how many cubes have been done, and it was... Something like 170,000 Yeah, it was, like, yeah. was 161,000 cubes have been done since uh, March. Right. Okay, like cool. And, and what, what does that represent in actual real-life distance? That's a good question. Well, okay, so so one yeah. cell, <laughs> so one neuron is thousands of cubes. So that, that those one hundred and sixty-one thousand. Right. So 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 one one neuron would be thousands of cubes, and uh, but but every cube right now is being done by six, ten people. By what? Ten people, because we have this. Uh, um, have the dem democratic kind of voting on each cube, right? So, okay, that that number would really only be, f you know, sufficient for not that many cells. Let's say ten cells. Okay. Okay. So, and and I would say obviously, but um, perhaps not not so obviously. The reason that's important is because then you can do projections, right? And you can say if we bring on uh, a million users. Oh, yeah. And 
right? And 10 people have done this in this amount of time, a million users would, would increase that, you know, linearly. And at the end of X of Y amount of time, we'd have this, this much done. And then you could say, this is what that part of the nervous system would look like. That's right. Yeah. So there's, there's two, there's, yeah. Yeah, that was a good you know, this is really just the beginning. Um, the first Absolutely. Low steps of something that's really going to be huge. And right. There are two ways in which we can get faster. One is by increasing the community. And the other thing that will happen over time is that the artificial intelligence inside iWire will improve. So the, the AI mm -hmm. will do more and more of the work and people will just be doing the harder, the harder cases. And mm -hmm. so that's also going to enable us to go faster. So, so yeah, we're going kind of slow at the, at the moment, I admit it, but I think um, we've got tremendous potential. Oh, I didn't even think you were going slow. <laughs> we're, going slow. We're, patient. we're patient. You know, we want to see we, we want to see a new cell every day, or every right. Hour, right? If, if that you know, in, in principle, we could in principle that could be done if we just got enough people excited and uh, and then we develop the computer technology more. So, so yeah, it's uh, it's exciting, but we got to persuade people to do it. So get all your friends involved with J Day. Yeah, share mm -hmm. eyewear with everyone you know. <laughs> <laughs> Invite, convince your friends to talk about it at your Christmas parties or whatever parties you'll be having. <laughs> <laughs> talk about it at your Christmas parties yeah, or yeah, whatever. <laughs> Chris oh, I'm going to have a pagan party, thanks. Chris That's a winter party. solstice party. <laughs> All right, any... Um, I guess we're, we're about ready to sign out because it's Saturday and I know everyone has wants to go and relax and enjoy their weekend by, by doing more eyewire. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Do it right now. <laughs> yes! Evidently. <laughs> She's playing eyewire during the eyewire hangout. Does anyone yeah. have any last words? I just have one final, well, two final comments, very short one. One, I'm going to send you the, the that image about, I, I think I told you, about the murdered man in the bottom of a river inside a bag that I found <laughs> doing eye wire. You know that image? I haven't sent it. I sent you the skater. But I the think I told you, I found... I wire and ended up in a bag? I don't want to do this. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> but I'm going to send it. I, saw, I, I said, oh my god, that looks like a man inside a bag in the bottom of the river. So I'm going to send it out. And the other one is Sorry? Neuron, it's, a, it's, a, it's a part of a retinal neuron that looks like a man in a body. Yeah. Body. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's kind of, uh, anyway. And the other one is not a question. I, I was thinking about making it a question, but I don't know. I, I don't think you've got time for something that deep. Jose? But Jose? there must be a story behind that chair, Sebastian. No, Jose? There Dude. must be a story behind that chair you're sitting on. I was not expecting to see that chair. Yeah. Jose? Have you heard of Rorschach? No. <laughs> you said that this neuron looks like a guy in a body bag? Yes. There's a thing called a Rorschach test. You might want to look into it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I, yeah, I, I know what it is. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I know. And that's why we're studying the retina. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> understand your perception of what you're seeing. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I have All right, sorry. You look like a candy wrapped. <laughs> I have this chair because I, there was a time when I had a, 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 an unsavory addiction to Craigslist. <laughs> oh, right, I got it. I got it. Yeah, well, that, that's like a chair I, I would expect it to find in a hacienda in some Latin American uh, country. So, like, like mine. So that's why I'm asking. It really surprised me. I hadn't seen it at the beginning, but I had to say something about it. All right. Anyone else have any last words? Be less somber <laughs> than the body bag. <laughs> You're like, no, I'm afraid now. I won't say anything else. <laughs> yeah, given you know, given our you know our technical difficulties, we we tried to email all nine thousand registered users to about this hangout, and uh, we found out that most emails never got there because they got filtered out as spam. So we, we have to work on our. Uh, we have to work on our email email distribution <laughs> to our users. We we are always having technical difficulties like this. If, if if you guys want some help with that for your project, let me know. I'd be happy to help you. Oh, excellent! Yeah, 
yeah. evidently email distribution is an art. So, yes, it is. Yes. There are words and phrases that you should and should not use and different ways to improve open rates versus the, their, yeah. Oh, we, we weren't even blocked by, by um, we weren't even blocked by user spam filters. We were just blocked by Gmail. Because right. That's, 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 that's what I mean is there are automated tools that look for words and phrases like Gmail spam filter, like Yahoo spam filter, and it will automatically stop those messages from being delivered. I think we got filtered for more elementary reasons, like just sending too many messages. So, so doubtful. Or even, you yeah, doubtful? Uh, well, it, dep it depends on where it came from. Again, probably not the forum you want to you want to discuss. I'd be happy to <laughs> happy to put things. I'll <laughs> we'll ask you offline. It's always something we're we're struggling with. Yeah, right. I think it would be great to look into that. And maybe John looks like he's got a clearer view on that. But also, I, I thought at a time maybe you could email people if they have not done anything in iWire for like a month. So we've missed you or something. That could be done. All right. Through email. Automatically, so. Back to eyewire. That's right. We love you all. We love you all. All right. Well, hey, rock, rock on, y'all. Rock on. All right. Great bye seeing bye. the four of you there. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everybody, good for meet, hanging good out. Good to meet all you guys down on the bottom of the screen. Monday. Yeah, Monday. Monday. Everybody. Go J Day. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> bye, bye. Bye. See ya. <laughs>